and welcome. Welcome to Impact Church. I'm Pastor Jay. I am Pastor Holly Arsenault. I'm Robbie Jones, the lead pastor of Impact Church. It is such a pleasure to have you with us. Impact Church is a place where we focus on exalting Jesus. We exalt Jesus. We equip disciples. Equipping disciples and engaging. And engaging our neighbors. Whether you're in your bed or at your breakfast table. We really want to encourage you to join in and worship with us. Hey, we hope you will enjoy our worship service. We're glad that you chose to worship with us here at Impact Church. We're really glad you're here today. You are welcome. Let's worship together.
You are wrong. You are on your throne. You are God. You are God alone. And right now. And right now. In the good. In the good times and bad. You are on your throne. awesome God and even when we're not great his mercy is new every morning every morning we wake up we have another opportunity to make an impact to make a change to be a difference so because he's great we lift our hands and we can declare his greatness how great is our God he's the name above all names there's no name like his name you know, cancer may sound cool, but, but Jesus has the authority. You know, some people may speak COVID, but Jesus still reigns. The name of Jesus is, is bigger than any name. So this is a public confession today that we just want to sing together in your homes, in your cars, wherever you're listening to us this morning. Let's lift this praise up that his name is the name above all names. And we honor him and we bless him. Because he's worthy of every praise. Because you're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. You're the name above all things. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing praise. Yes, our God. Come on, say, you're the name above all names. Worthy of our praise. You are worthy of all praise. And our hearts will sing how great. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Is our God. Say you're the name above all names. Say you're the name above all names. You alone are worthy. together. How great is our God, say. How great is our God. Is our God. Sing with me. Sing with me. How great is our God. Is our God. And all will sing. All will sing. How great. How great. How great is our God. Is our God. Say, how great Oh, 
tells us in Luke 6 that when we give generously, generous gifts will be given back to us. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I don't know about you, but having blessings in my life that are running over sure sounds good to me. We believe in the principle of giving. For one, it is specifically outlined in scripture as an act of worship to do so. And two, so you can be divinely blessed. So we encourage you to become a committed partner in sowing seed into God's kingdom. I can guarantee you that if you stay committed and faithful, God will supernaturally open the windows of heaven and pour you out such blessings you won't have enough room to receive. Join us in sowing your best seed and you will be divinely blessed. Coming up in March is the relaunch of our Impact Church South Campus. We hope that you will join us in Everyone is Welcome. Our first meeting will be Sunday, March 7th at 3 p.m. at Greenbrier Community Church. Their address is 825 Greenbrier Parkway in Chesapeake. Social distancing will be practiced and all CDC guidelines will be followed for your safety. We hope to see you there. Are you dealing with the loss of a loved one or going through something that you need someone to talk to or someone to pray with you? Here at Impact Church, we're here for you and we care. Please let us know if there is any way that we can help you. You can call or text 757-901-9988. That's 757-901-9988. Or email us at staff at goimpactva.com. That's staff at goimpactva.com. Know that your Impact Church family is here for you. Good morning, Impact Church. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. Um, it's just a joy to be able to come into your home and to share the gospel with you. I want you to know we're praying for you. We are believing God with you. I, you've heard me so many times talk about the power of agreement 
And I just want you to know that our staff and myself and Pastor Lynn, we're, we're just agreeing with you and believing God uh, that he'll meet every needs. Well, I am so excited um, because today we have a very, very special guest. Been trying to schedule this for some time. I want to introduce to our Impact Church family. You may have seen her on Pastor uh, Veronica's um, program, but she is an amazing woman of God. I want to introduce Lucy Ann Costa Quattrone. And from this point on, it's just Lucy Ann. That's okay? the easy part. <laughs> That's the easy part. Um, Lucy Ann, it is such a joy to have you here as a part of our uh, Impact um, ministry this morning, Impact Church. And um, I've been looking forward to this for some time because uh, a few months ago, you, you sent me an amazing gift. You sent me your, your brand new book that you have out called Strategic Faith. It is absolutely an amazing book. And um, before t today's over, we'll put something up so that you can learn how to uh, order this. But um, reading your book on strategic faith is just an absolute joy. You know, as a church, we've been talking about built to last and what it really means to endure hardship. And um, we've been looking at, you know, Matthew 7, where Jesus talked about building your house either on the rock or the sand. And um, it's just been amazing. But, but first of all, I just want to say welcome to our, our service today. And um, I, we're, we're glad you're here. Thank you so much for the invite. I have been really looking forward to this as well. I know we've had a difficult time scheduling it, yeah. but we're here for such a time as this, and I'm excited about that. Perfect timing. Yes, perfect absolutely. timing. God's timing is always perfect. So it, I am it is. With now's the time when we we're supposed to get together. Yeah, I believe that, and um, because one of the things, and and I've in our conversations that I, I just celebrate you, in, in writing your book and and watching your testimony you have an amazing journey and looking at a, a commercial pilot i know god has had me on a lot of adventures which is where strategic faith comes in because without that i would not have been able to endure and right. so i'm so thankful that god took me on that journey and taught me the things that he taught me so that we could have a moment like this right. where i can share what god's done in my life and help impact everyone else out there. So if you're listening, just know you were created for greatness. There may be things that are holding you back, but hopefully by the end of today, you will uncover what some of those are. And that's my heart, that people will know that they're created for greatness. God right. has a plan and a purpose, and he's going to see that through if they will allow him to. You know, I'm, I'm so thankful that you bring that up, especially in the, in the midst of the, our series about being built uh, to last and that we've been built for for greatness we you know guy and, and when I read that one of the things that jumped out at me and immediately what the Holy Spirit did is he took me to the place of creation and I began to think about how every day that God created the you know the earth he created um, you know, the sun, he created the, the heavens and, and the earth. He, he created the animals. And, and after every day, he, he said, and it was good. Yes. And it was good. But then on the sixth day, when he created man, he created us, church. Come on. Come on. Hang in there with me. Yes. He, he created man when he created Adam, everything else that he created, he's, it's at the end of that day, he said he looked at it and it was good. But when he created man, he looked at it and he said, it is very good. Because it was in his image. Right. That's right. That's, right. That's powerful. That, that, is, that is so powerful. And uh, so what inspired you? What inspired you to, to write Strategic Faith? Well, like you, we just mentioned, I have been on a journey. God's had me involved in so many different things that really took a leap of faith. Like you have, 
just being a pilot, you have to have faith to get in that plane right. and do whatever it is you're going to do, right? And even along just my personal journey of things that I've walked through, raising the family, I had gone through a divorce. I mean, I've walked through some really tough things. Right. And God was there the whole time. And I made him a promise a long time ago when I first understood his word. I made him a promise that if it was within my power, I would let as many people that I could know the truth about who he was and the power and authority that he's given to us. Right. And that was the inspiration behind this. Man, it, it, is, it is so good. Well, you know, and there's so much that I, I want to talk about. You know, one of the things that um, I, I, I wrote this down, and I want to um, bring this up because you, you put this in your book, and it looks like my... My notes aren't working. The I'm way. excited. You took notes from my book. I did. I am so excited. I, I took. <laughs> I took notes from. You, you, you made this, and, and I'm I'm quoting you in this. It says, "I was well schooled in the law, but was missing love." Absolutely. You understood what it meant to, from right and wrong, but not grace and mercy. And I thought. That's the message that the church needs to begin to demonstrate. We, we understand, the, 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 as you said, you were schooled in the law of it, but you were missing love. Absolutely. Can you, can you just expand on that? Certainly. So I was blessed to be raised in a family that taught me faith. So I knew there was a God, but I didn't know God. Right. I knew about his Ten Commandments. I knew about prayer. I knew about faith. But I didn't know how to activate it. I didn't know it was something I could activate. And I certainly didn't know about God's love. I, I saw God as this ruler who was watching over me to see when I would mess up. Right. And he would be quick to let me know I messed up. But that's not the God I came to understand and know personally. When I came into a personal relationship with God is when I saw him as a father, a loving father, someone that loved me unconditionally. And I never understood God to be that way. And once I received that love, then I understood and God taught me how to walk in that love and how to live out that love as a lifestyle. Right. That was all new territory for me. That, you know... I just know that there are many of you that are watching us today, that's, that may be your image of God, is that he is, you know, he's sitting here looking over us. And, and it's unfortunate that so many people, that's their, their image uh, of God. And a lot of times what I've discovered in my ministry as I've counseled with people is that they've taken an image of an earthly father and they transferred it to a, um, a heavenly father, which is not always the best way. I was fortunate. I have a, have a dad that loved me and, and, and provided for me and did everything for me. But not everybody has had that um, ability and had that fortune. And what I, what I look at this and what I understand and when I read that, that quote in, in your book, something just leaped in my spirit and said, that's the message that God really wants to... They look at the Old Covenant, and they, they see God, and they see the Ten Commandments, and they read that. But what we fail to realize is that God gave those things as a protection for that, for that time. Do you want, you want to address that yeah well what i see in that pastor is god did set up those laws for a reason and we have to remember that that was all before jesus came right right that was before that was a way of life before jesus came god it was a setup God was setting his people up for such a time as when Jesus would come. And now that Jesus has come, the message isn't the law. Right. The message is love. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't right or wrong, that right. we can just do whatever we want. There's still a standard and principles, strategies that God gives us to live by. But the main one is love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love one another. Right. That's what he's commanded us to do. And I think all too often we forget that especially in the world today we in culture today 
we have gotten so far away from the love message and what that looks like. Pastor, let's be real with the church. And I believe that that's been a struggle too for the church, right. even from the pulpit, to be real with the people. Love isn't a fairy tale. Love is tough. Yeah. Love is tough work. And we have to walk this out day by day, minute by minute. And we have to figure out what that looks like in our everyday life. And that's why I wrote this, so that it could be practical steps that people could say, how do I walk out this love life? How do I walk out this love that God's telling me when the world around me is filled with hate? When my family may be falling apart, when things just aren't going right, right. am I still called to love? Am I still really called to love my enemies? Yes, we are. Right. And that's not easy, but that's the message. And if we can grasp that, the first, one of the first, it's the second strategy, actually. So drink from the well is the first one. Right. And then live to love. That's accepting God's love as, his, as our Father. And then learning how to live out that love. And when we get that, the rest is just going to fall into, into place. And, you know, as I'm sitting here listening to you and about love, it takes faith to believe that God loves me. And that's why faith is so important. And that's why, as the Bible teaches us, is that, you know, we, we receive faith as we listen to the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so when we grasp a hold of, of our faith in God. One of the very first things that you're going to have to do, those of you that are listening to us this morning, is that you're going to have to really believe that God really does love you. And God really does want his best for you. Sometimes you look around and, and you see um, everyone else getting blessed and you're wondering, you know, why isn't God blessing me? Well, God's waiting for you to be a testimony. God's waiting and going to, he's going to demonstrate his power and his love toward you if you just keep walking with him. And, and that's one of the things that I really did enjoy uh, about your book because what I, as I read it, I saw three different sections and, and, and you know, you got to get the book. It's amazing. And the first part is about the struggle. That, that was really the, the first section is a struggle. Because I think sometimes we think that when we come to God and we give our lives to Jesus is that everything is going to be easy. But we would need faith if, if everything was easy. So really, God takes us to a place of testing. I really believe that there are tests. We, we see that in Scripture. Where, where God took Abraham and says, take Isaac up to the mountain and, and, and offer him as a sacrifice to me. That, that was an amazing test. And, and I love this about that story, Abraham, because he takes his servant with him and they get to the foot of the mountain and he says, stay here. The boy and I are going to worship. The boy and I are going to worship. And if one of the things that I, I've discovered in my life, and I've tried to do this, and, and you've kind of followed me during February, these 28 days of, of, of praise that I've been doing because things have been very difficult in my life over the last few weeks and, and months. But what I've discovered is that, man, when you have faith in God, then you can climb the mountain. And it is a struggle. And that in your faith then allows you to worship even when things are chaotic, even when things are, are difficult, when there's a struggle. Do you, do you fi find that? Absolutely. And if I can tag off of that where you said we, we need faith, we need that measure of faith. And that has to be developed. It, it, we That's start so with the measure of faith. But just like our physical muscles need to be developed, our spiritual muscles need to be developed. And faith is the foundation. We can't even come to God without faith. Right. Right. We have to come to God by faith. And we have to continue to develop that muscle. And when we do, and we do that by 
getting stronger through the struggles, getting stronger through the doubt and the unbelief and the, the pain of yesterday. I mean, that can keep us trapped right. and it's hard to move past that, but that's the trick of the enemy. Don't forget the enemy has a strategy too. Right. God has the ultimate strategy, but the enemy has a strategy. Sure. He's very strategic in how he attacks you, Pastor. He does. And he's very strategic on how he attacks me. But if we can be discerning and tap into that, by faith, we can overcome that. And we have to realize, how is he attacking me? What thoughts are, is he constantly bombarding me with? That he's not going to use the same tactics on you, possibly, that he's using on me. Right. Or those of you out there, he has his own strategy for you. But faith is the strategy that will help you overcome it. Every struggle can be overcome by faith as you develop it. We get caught up and think we have to be in the strong faith um, master right. before we can overcome no, we get strong in the overcoming. Oh, that's good. Come on, right, Pastor? Yeah, we, right. we don't right. sit on the shoreline. Okay, I'm a surfer. I love okay. to surf. Cool. But it's tough work. Right. I don't get better at it by sitting on the shoreline. Right. There are many days when I've had that surfboard and I'm on the side of the shoreline. And I'm like, those waves are really big. I don't think I want to go out there. And there's something inside of me that says, I just want to do it. I just want to do it. And so I pick up that board by faith, and I go out there knowing that I'm going to be able to do what it is I set out to do. And in the midst of that, God's going to help me. He's protected me out there more times than I could think about. When we're in the struggle, God's protecting us even though we don't think he is. Right. Even though we can't see it, he is there. He says he'll never leave us or forsake us. Right. He's there with us. And if we could have faith in that, then we can overcome. Man, that, that, that is so good. You know, one of the things that, I, that I'll piggyback a little bit, the Bible teaches us that he gives us a measure of faith. Everyone, a measure of faith. But our faith, he gives that not just to lay dormant, as you talked about, is that we have to build our faith. And as our faith grows in the struggle, as you talked about, that, that is so important, is that that's why we, you can't give up. And I just want to speak into your life right now. Don't give up. Let the Holy Spirit build your faith in your struggles. Because that, that's one of the things that your book really spoke to me. It was so practical. One of the things I, I shared with you, it, to me, as I read you, it's balance. I, you understand that you know, when I have faith, it doesn't mean everything's great. And I, you know... I won't have any t troubles, but what I have is I have an assurance. When I have faith in God, I have an assurance that, that nothing is going to come against me that he doesn't know about. And then in, in your book, you talk about you go from a struggle to a shift. And, and I love that because that, that's a word that I think is so important. Um, I've been, I saw it in my life. I've seen it in the ministry of our church. Is that when God, oftentimes, when our faith is being built up and we're growing in faith, is all of a sudden God will shift us. And in that shift, we, we, I believe that's when new revelation comes. I believe that we get a glimpse of really his plan for our lives and something that we can pursue. Absolutely. I'm so glad you brought up the shift because it's crucial. We can get stuck in the struggle yes, and want to get to the strategies and want to get to the victory, but there's an in-between there, right. and that's the shift. So the shift has to start, first of all, in the heart, with that heart surrender that God, whatever, I'm going to do it your way. Right. I'm tired of doing it my way. And this is for Christians. Absolutely. That, Absolutely. This isn't just a, just because we're, we become, sometimes we become Christians. And so, and, and I've been in this a long time. And sometimes it's like, okay, we're just, you know, we've become Christians. Now we're just waiting for God to come back. But that's not the plan. That's the plan of the enemy. Right. That's the strategy of the enemy to keep the church silent, to keep God's people silent, to keep right. us from, the, the subtitle is living beyond limitations. Right. God created us not to be settled for the status quo of the culture. Oh, he good. settled, he wanted us not to settle for that, but to live beyond all limitations. Think about the walk of Jesus. I mean, Jesus right. was making shifts every day. Right. He was walking in a culture that said, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't speak to women, you can't touch the leopards. And he shifted in an instant when the father told him. 
Wow. When the father told him where to go, he shifted and he went. When the father told him what to do, he shifted and he did it. We are created in that same image to do that same way, to, to operate in the same way, to touch heaven and bring it to earth. We have the ability to do that if we shift our thinking. And it's right. all up here. I call right. it stinking thinking. Yeah. I don't know about you, Pastor, but I can get stuck in my own head. Me too. And I often say it's a dangerous territory. Right. I have to remember. I've got to go back to biblical principles. I have to go back to God's strategies and get out of my own head. Get right. away from that stinking thinking and choose. It's a choice to make that shift. Every day we have a choice. We could do it God's way or we could do it our way. We can settle for the status quo or we can say, no, I want a life beyond limitations. Right. You know, that that just speaks to my spirit because, it, again, it takes faith to shift because the enemy will, as you said, try to keep us stuck. And, and one of the things that, and I, I say this to people all the time, and I know you being a pilot, you it was a risk every time I'm sure you got in that cockpit. And I love risk takers. I, I There's just something that God has put in me that has is, is constantly put me in a position where I had to choose to take the step, step out of the boat like Peter. You know, w walk with Jesus, leave everything behind and, and walk with Jesus. That shift oftentimes requires a, a risk. And that risk is where your faith, where I call it, you know, the rubber meets the road. You know, it's, it's easy to say, I've got faith. But when God is shifting you and things are, are really transitioning in, in your life is when you need to activate your faith and, and understand that God has created you for this. And God has created you to for, for, for greatness, as you talk about. God has created you for um, the next thing in, in your life. Um, you can't just, you know, rest on your laurels. You've got to constantly be moving and constantly be walking with him. And that, that just requires faith. And that shift excites me. Me too. And the, the whole faith walk is by sight, right? We walk by faith, not, I'm sorry, we walk by faith, not by sight. Right. We, as humans, want to see the road ahead of us. Right. And that's not always the path. Most of the time, it's not the path, let's be honest, right? right? And the one thing I love is God doesn't waste anything in our life. All the pain, all the suffering, all the mountains, all the valleys, he doesn't waste any of that. And I right. think about my pilot training. And how God uses that to strengthen my faith, because there's so many times that, and I'm also an inst a flight instructor. Right. So I had to teach students how to fly an aircraft without being able to see out the windshield. That is tough training. But think about it. Our faith is tough training because right. we can't see the whole picture. We don't see what God sees. We can pray and say, God, give me eyes to see what you see. But even that, Pastor, you've been in ministry a long time. Yeah. He gives you parts. He, he gives you the next step, right? He doesn't right. show you everything. And when I'm in an airplane and I can't see out the, wind, out the windshield, I have to trust my instruments. I have to trust my GPS. Right. We have an internal GPS, that's so we good. have the Holy Spirit with us. We, we have his word as our guidebook. I mean, when I'm up in an airplane, I'm not flying blinded totally. I may not be able to see with my natural eyes, but I have things that are equipping mm. me to fly successfully when I cannot see. Come on, I'm up in the air thousands of feet, and I can't see a thing, and I'm going to trust that there's a runway at the end of this flight path that I'm on, right. and I don't even see that till maybe I'm 200 feet above the ground. Wow. That takes faith. It does. If I can do that as a pilot, what can we do as Christians? Uh, come, come on. Come on, Pastor. What That's can good. we do if we take God's word and say, I might not see victory in my finances right now. I might not see victory in my family right now. I may not see victory in my ministry right now. But by faith, I know that runway's there. I know that God's is so plan is going to come to pass because he said so. And this is a message that's so relevant today during this pandemic what we've walked through over the last year and what they're saying we may have to continue to walk through. but it's not a time to walk in fear it's a time to walk in faith and so that we can overcome this message because we have been built to last and and the last thing in your book i will we'll bring this to a close 
you talk about the strategies and that that speaks to me as well because I, i'm i'm a strategic planner i'm a strategic thinker um i lead our ministry by trying to create strategies to make sure that we're on task but sometimes and, and I, i've been guilty of this though, sometimes we begin to depend on ourselves to create these strategies and we think that we know what needs to happen but really as i as i read your book it, faith is what builds a strategy for my 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 faith is the foundation that i guess that's the best way to say it. your faith then becomes your foundation to build these strategies on that allows you to walk out your destiny and what God has for you. Absolutely. Actually, the book opens up with faith is the pathway to greatness because yeah. that is our foundation. Right. But I want to leave you with this, Pastor, because I want to see everyone in Impact Church live out their greatness. Yes. I want to see you live in the greatness that God created you for, and that's going to start with the foundation of faith. But it's going to leave you with no excuses. We oh. don't have any excuses to be complacent any longer. Right. The world is hurting. The world needs answers, and they're searching everywhere in the wrong place. And yeah. we have that answer, and I know that sounds like a cliche, but it's the truth. Our faith can break through barriers that the culture out there knows nothing about, and we can't be complacent about it anymore. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Word of God. We have one another. There's no excuses why we aren't impacting. The name of your church is Impact. There's no reason why you're not impacting your families, your community, and this world with the power of heaven. There's wow. no excuse. No more excuses. That, that can preach for hours and hours. Come on. And hours. Come on. How much time do you have? I know. Come on. This is, this is amazing. It really is amazing. Well, Lucianne, I cannot thank you enough for coming and being with us and being with Impact Church this morning. You truly are um, an inspiration, a blessing. Um, your book, and I really want to encourage, I, I really do want to encourage um, Impact Church um, go the book. We'll probably put it up on, at the end of uh, our service today, how you can uh, get a hold of uh, Lucy Ann and how you can communicate with her and how you can buy this book. Uh, you cannot have mine because she's autographed it for me I have. And, I have. And, 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 and written me uh, a special note. And I'm, uh, this, I'll cherish this and go back to it many, many times. Because it, it is the message that really the world needs to hear. And it's the message that the church needs to demonstrate. You know, I, I teach this to our people all the time. The word of God is, is not given to us to, to really reveal the law, the rule. It's not a rule book. It's a heart book. And I want to encourage you, pick up the heart book. Pick up books like this. Feed your, your spirit. Feed your heart. Feed your mind. Because when you do that, what you'll notice is if you do it every day, what will happen is your faith will begin to be um, strengthened. Your, your faith will grow. You will begin to um, walk out your destiny, your purpose. You will, you will reach heights that you can't even imagine that God had for you. And that's what we've been trying to share with you today, is that God has got something greater for you, and don't give up. And just before we pray, just before we close, I just want to encourage you today. Reach to heaven, reach up to God. And I just want to encourage you to grab a hold of, of the hand of God in your spirit and, and convince yourself mm, I feel this in my spirit yes. because the enemy you've been listening to outside voices you have been listening to things and I'm prophesying to somebody right now is that some of you feel like you know you're not worthy of it it's not for you there's you, you, 
been convinced that these generational curses are going to you know, follow you and follow your children, your grandchildren. That is a lie from hell today. We're breaking some yes. things off of Impact Church. We yes. are breaking some things off of, of Portsmouth and Suffolk and Chesapeake and Virginia Beach and Norfolk. And wherever anyone is watching um, this, this program today, right where you are, we are breaking things off of your life, breaking things off of your family. Because our faith is greater than anything that we've ever encountered with the enemy and, and the lies that we've been told. And I just want to I just want to pray for you today. We are overcomers. We've been built for this, built to last. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today for the power of your word. I thank you for the ministry of Lucianne today. I thank you for your grace. I thank you that we've learned. Uh, the message of grace and mercy. Father, I thank you today that you're bringing us to a place of supernatural faith where the gift of faith is released even in greater measures where circumstances seem impossible and where man says it's impossible, but God just speaks a word over us and says it is possible. So today we just pray and blessings and we bind the, the lies of the enemy we bind the deception of hell right now and we release the blessings of heaven to be released to our congregation, released to every person that listens to this message. And today we declare victory over our families. We declare victory over our lives. And we're thankful today that we are overcomers. And we give you praise today, Lord for your goodness to us. Thank you for faith. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us faith. As your word says, that it's impossible to please God without faith. So today, as we maybe go through some struggles, some people may be going through struggles today, we just let faith arise. Father, there may be some today that are going through shifts in their lives. We release faith to them today. Father, as we begin to build strategies, we release faith today. And we're thankful that you are with us and that your Holy Spirit is teaching us greater insight how to believe. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lucian, thank you so much thank you. for being here, and we are just honored to have you. God bless you. We thank you. Have a great week, and we just uh, encourage you, reach out to us if there's anything you need. If you need prayer, if you need encouragement, email us, call our office. Let us know how we can help you. We are here for you, and most of all, we want you to know that God loves you and that we love you. And we're, we believe in you. And we're here for you. Have a great week.